Hey everybody, welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to be giving you my initial impressions of Rails 7. So over the last few years, Ruby on Rails hasn't really changed a whole lot on the back end. The whole model view controller system kind of has remained the same and intact. And if you're doing like a, an application that just serves as an API, you probably haven't noticed a whole lot since Rails version 4. Most of what's changing has occurred on the way that we do front-end templates and handle JavaScript with Rails. In Rails version 5 and very prominently in version 6, we were using the Webpacker gem to package and bundle our JavaScript assets and we could also do our style sheets that way as well. But in Rails 7, there's kind of a paradigm shift. So I'm going to be covering that in this video and give you my impressions of that. And I'm going to be using the context of this DHH blog article here. And here in this article, he talks about how Rails now gives you three options on how you can do the front end in your application. And I think this is probably the biggest change that you're going to see going from version 6.1 to version 7. So I think the most advertised and highly anticipated feature of Rails 7 front-end development is a new feature that they've introduced called import maps. And import maps is just basically a way that Rails gives you of incorporating ES6 style JavaScript imports into your front-end templates. Import Maps is actually a JavaScript language and web browser feature that's now supported by all the major web browsers. The main thing that Rails is doing that's unique here is that it's providing you command line commands for pin and unpin, which automatically generates the import map links for your program. So essentially, Import Map Rails is giving you an option to manage your JavaScript dependencies with the ease of using the Ruby on Rails bundle tool for gems or packages using Node Package Manager or Yarn. Import Maps Rails also makes it easy for you to configure where your end users in their web browsers are going to be downloading the JavaScript deliverable files. It can link to a CDN or you can choose to download those dependencies into your application and serve them along with your web page through your own Rails application and server. So this is very similar to the way that we used to do jQuery, where it was pretty common to link your jQuery deliverable using the script tag to a CDN out there, or you could just install it as a gem into your application. When the end user runs his web page, jQuery will be downloaded by the web browser, and then it will give your web page access to an array of JavaScript functions, which you could use anywhere on that web page that you have a script tag. The thing that I think Import Maps is trying to achieve is to get rid of the complexity of including JavaScript libraries into a simple web page. So many applications bundle their JavaScript libraries using a tool like Webpacker, which is incredibly difficult to configure and Rails is trying to do away with that. And a lot of the JavaScript libraries out there, you can run just fine as standalone modules. For example, you don't really need to compile React in order for it to work. You could just download the React deliverable, include that in your file with a reference, and then you could use React components that way on your web page. However, I see a major disadvantage to this approach because I question whether using plain uncompiled JavaScript is a good idea in 2022 because so many libraries are built with the assumption that you're going to be compiling them and have maybe a node-based environment and therefore by bypassing the compilation step of these libraries you're probably going to be missing out on a lot of useful features that you may want to use. For example, TypeScript is a compiled language that is very desirable right now because it makes managing large and complex data in a JavaScript application a lot easier and maintainable. You can't use TypeScript just by importing libraries using ES6 because TypeScript has to be compiled and it ultimately generates plain JavaScript code. Also, if you're using React, you can't use JSX because JSX has to be compiled using a tool like Webpack or ESBuild. 
and JSX is a very desirable feature to use React. So I don't know exactly why it makes sense that you would handicap yourself by holding yourself back from using this very useful language feature in React. So overall, I dislike the import maps feature of Rails 7 because I think it goes against the grain of where the web development world is headed right now. And fortunately, Rails 7 does give you a better option, in my opinion, of using Webpack or ES build to compile your JavaScript. And this is my favorite way of setting up a Rails application right now because it gives you the flexibility of how much JavaScript you want to incorporate into your Rails application, and you could still use the Rails templating system. In your Rails application, instead of using the import map Rails gem, you're going to be using the JS bundling Rails gem. And I go into detail about how to do this and set that up with ES build as your JavaScript compiler in the recent video that I did about upgrading to Rails 7. And for my Patreon only subscribers, I have code examples on Patreon and in the private GitHub repository that you could look at and see examples of how to set up either import map rails or the JS bundling rails and using ES build. So be sure to join my Patreon if you want to check that out. And by the way, it's easy to get Webpack and Webpacker mixed up. Webpack is the bundling tool, the JavaScript module bundling tool that is used in the JavaScript world. It's essentially the compiler that I've been referring to when I'm talking about compiling your JavaScript, but it's actually more of a transpiler because it doesn't generate machine code. And Webpacker is a Ruby gem that provides a wrapper for Webpack that makes it easier to install into your Rails program and use Webpack. But the Webpacker gem has been retired and it's no longer being updated. So now, what are the cons of this approach of using uh, a JavaScript bundling tool with your Rails application? I'm trying to think of what they would be because you could use the Rails templating engine. You could use Slim Templates or ERB to generate your HTML, and then you could use Yarn or Node Package Manager to add your Node modules and, and have those available in your front end templates. I can't really think of a disadvantage to this approach unless you really just don't like using JavaScript at all and your preference is to use something much simpler like import maps. But as I pointed out, import maps is kind of limiting in the amount of features that you could use. So I guess there's kind of a trade-off between how simple import maps you want to make your application or how much features that you want to use in your application, which would be going the ES build or, or Webpack route. The nice thing about Rails right now is that it gives you the option to use either one. But there's actually a third option you could use for writing your Ruby on Rails application. And this one has been around for a while. You could still use the API only option to build your Rails application. And in this setup, you're just using your Ruby on Rails program as a backend where the front end is a standalone single page application written in a major JavaScript framework like React or Vue or Angular or Ember, but it's a simple, uh, it's a single page application and it just queries your Rails application on the back end running on the server via an API. And then Rails handles your database and your back end database manipulations while JavaScript is doing everything on the client side in the front end that the user sees in their browser. And this is actually a very preferred setup for large enterprise sort of applications. The API that Rails is going to be delivering is either going to be REST endpoints that are queried by the, Java applica the JavaScript application or GraphQL, which is another way that you could transfer data between a backend API and a front end uh, in JavaScript using a framework. Now, the disadvantage to this approach is that it's the most labor intensive. To get it done, you're probably going to need a team of developers 
And in particular, somebody on your team is probably going to specialize in the JavaScript front end framework that you're using, which is probably going to be something like React or Vue or Angular. And that is a specialty in its own. And this is one of the ways that I feel like web development has gotten really hard and complex over the last several years is that you've had this split of the back end and front end getting so complex with the amount of features that they have and the amount of updates that they have that you really need more people to work on an application to cover all the aspects of it both the front end and the back end. So that's an overview of the three ways that uh, you could do front end in your Ruby on Rails application. You could do import maps, which is the simplest but most limiting. Uh, I think it has a nice goal of empowering the back end Ruby on Rails developer, but its limitations might not provide you with enough features that you want for a very rich front end experience. And then you've got the middle road, which is using a bundling tool like ES build through the JS bundling gem. And you can still rig up your Rails as a standalone API on the server, which is an entirely separate JavaScript driven front end. And this one by far is the most complex to do and requires the most maintenance. Anyway, if you found this video useful, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video.